I met Norman in his, one of his early offices in Great Portland Street. Not his first office, but it was uh, when the firm must have been 60 or 70 people in Great Portland Street in what had been a shop. And I can remember um, very clearly um, Norman as an individual, absolutely in love with architecture. A yellow propelling pencil, a black book, and nothing has changed and that's 40 years ago. I think the first of the projects was a business part. The firm came up with an inverted roof, which is pitched but the wrong way. That was quite ingenious. So amongst a group of other well-known architects of uh, Arup, Skidmore, uh, and some younger firms at the time, this building stood out. It's very elegant, simple, clever, good landscape, a grand staircase um, in the middle of the building. It was actually three wings attached together at the front. The staircase, very wide, bold staircase. The Royal Academy is what we call a grade one listed building, a very important historical building. And the proposal was to put a very simple glass addition on the top. In the, firstly, in the entrance was to be in the space between what's called Old Burlington House and New Burlington House, two 18th century buildings of great value. And the space between was a leftover space. In, in a way, quite boring. Along came the idea of installing an elevator and a staircase and making this space be the link between old and new. The elevator was glass. The new transcended up the building and suddenly you were in a different world. There was a lot of debate with the uh, conservation groups, should this be allowed, shouldn't it be allowed? Because nobody had really ever done this before. Later, Norman was to go on to the British Museum and major works in uh, very large public buildings. But I think the Sackler was probably the first very modern intervention. I worked with Norman on the Millennium Bridge, the Blade of Light as it was called by Norman. Uh, I was a Tate Gallery Committee member on the bridge. And um, when people saw this bridge, they thought, I've never seen a bridge like that before, because the structure was in the wrong place. Uh, it had a very elegant, thin view. It, it didn't interrupt the, view, the river, it was slim, almost impossible, and quite modest, only the walkway itself four meters wide. And it was anticipated that it was a link from the Tate to the stairs which lead to St. Paul's Cathedral. Seven million people are now using it. And people will walk further to use this bridge because they enjoy it. That was a, an astounding success, a real piece of civic and much loved today. If you went there now, it would be full of people. So Norman is a man of complete dedication. He does architecture 24 seven, never stops thinking, drawing. So you could ask yourself why? Why does Norman do this? Why is he so committed? I think it's a natural skill when you see him with that pencil, when you see him thinking, when you see him drawing and then tearing it up, abandoning it, total commitment. He will just go on designing that building until he is satisfied. 
but as a human being, I find him a great friend to have. He's very considerate, very caring, very thoughtful, and not all architects of his caliber live in the real world. Norman is a real world person.